another design that I did is, and I, this, so this is a base. And all this is is a brush stroke of a glitter polish that's in a colored base. And then I went back with a sponge and dabbed on a different glitter. So let's do that. Because what I want you guys to do is not be afraid to play and not be afraid to screw up, okay? Because in a way, if you're open, it's hard to screw up. You can always kind of fix things and conceal them with stamping. It's really pretty awesome. All right, so the color that I used was a Color Club one. This is Holiday Splendor that I got in a big kit of, of colors, um, and I think it's fragranced, and I can't stand fragranced ones they, they make, and I'm glad the trend didn't last very long. They make my head hurt because they never stop smelling. You can smell them. Okay, so what am I doing here? I am actually wiping the brush off almost completely. You want it to be a dry brush type of effect and streaky. Okay, and you can go back in and dab if you want, but you don't want tons and tons of color there. Also, make sure that you close your bottles all the time. Okay. Okay, then the next one, I got this one at Walmart. I absolutely love that. Look at that. It's got these um, shifting shimmers that go from gold to green, as well as big chunky hollows. Ha! Oh. Is there like, I don't, I haven't met anybody yet who does not like hollow. Because honestly, they're so much like rainbows and does every girl and some guys love rainbows? All right, so with this one, what I'm looking for is a sponge. So you want a makeup sponge and try different kinds of sponges. So I have this one. Oh, thanks for the hearts, you guys. That's so awesome. Um, so this is one kind of makeup sponge. It has a more open texture. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I actually like the ones that are, have a much tighter texture that almost look like, and I've run out of them, I think. Nope, I've got one. So you can kind of see the difference here. This one has much more open cell type of structure, whereas this one is much tighter. I get a smoother gradient, a smoother ombre with this kind of a makeup sponge compared to this one. Um, there's also these kind that are used by nail professionals. It comes like this, it's a little dabber. This has a really, really tight sponge and they use it for gel. I would not use it for polish because you need to be able to clean it out really well without destroying the sponge so that it's reusable. Um, <clears throat> and that gel, wet, wet gel is easily cleaned up with rubbing alcohol um, and that doesn't destroy the, the sponge. Okay, so now what I wanna do is go in with a little bit of more of a chunky glitter. Some people wet their sponge so it doesn't absorb as much of the base, like the, the uh, regular base polish, but sometimes you want the sponge to dissolve or to soak up the actual suspension base that this is in. You want that to go away and get dissolved into the sponge. So, you know, don't be afraid to dink around. And that's why I love these little, so what I'm using, because they're super, super cheap, these color wheels. If you want to play with a color, you still have to polish them white. I've discovered that this color, if you're just to start practicing your nail art and stuff on this plastic, it will not behave the same 
over polish. You would think it would, but it doesn't. So your Sharpie, your polishes that you dry brush, all that kind of stuff, they're not gonna behave right. So get a really inexpensive white polish. The Sally Hansen Insta Dry works really well. And just paint all of these. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you also, when you are doing your swatch sticks, I try and remember to share this every time. Um, paint your polish on the underside. So this curved side here, paint it here so that then when you flip it over, you can see what it looks like with top coat. And you didn't have to paint top coat. So polish those on the underside, okay? But when you're doing these for playing, you need to polish on the top side. And I found that, you know, you can get them. I have so many drawers of everything. You can get these, these swatch wheels. You can get them. They're super cheap. And that's why I like them, because you just break these off. Um, but if you get clear and you're wanting to practice on like white or light pink or that um, you're going to end up having to do two coats over the clear so it doesn't your first coat doesn't look streaky whereas you can get away with one coat of white or pink when it's done on this cream color i wish they actually came white but they don't and i wish they actually came black but they don't um Anyway, okay, so here's what we've got going so far. And this is just dry brush, okay? And then sponged on some darker, chunkier glitter. Uh, she says, what top coat did you use? This is some um, generic one that I picked up from a beauty supply type of place. Um, my favorite for actually over my manicures is this one it's inexpensive and it works well uh, there are two that are more expensive but that people really really love and one is called sèche vite uh, it's from france and sèche vite means quick dry and hk girl both of those have an ingredient that is considered one of the forbidden three free and I don't care about three free I've written articles about it Doug's written articles Doug Shoon author of nail structure and product chemistry he's written articles about it anyway those two uh, polishes have an ingredient in there that actually helps dry the layers underneath okay so it helps I don't know how it works helps pull the solvents out into the air so that those so that your polish dries faster now a lot of people get tweaked out and they won't order them because I think it's toluene I think that's what it is don't hold me to it um, and so those two a lot of people really like them what I have trouble with those two is that because they dry so fast, the solvents evaporate so fast, um, it can cause the product to shrink up, okay? And so I will get shrinkage at the tip, and I just don't like it. So I need a product that's going to dry just a little bit slower. And I think a big part of that is because my nails a lot of times are cold, and so if I've got a product that's drying too fast on cold nails, um, it causes the shrinkage. So it's just, you know, your mileage will vary. Uh, you just try them. And if you don't like them, you can give them to somebody else. Angela Louise says, I've done, uh, on your, I've done nail art on your mom uh, doing an ombre and marble, and they're so adorable. That's awesome. What base coat do I use? Uh, Cartio, I use any ridge filling base coat. I don't have a huge favorite. I did an article over on Nail Care HQ um, that where I tested six different kinds of base coat 
and actually the winner is no longer my favorite because they changed it seems like they changed their formula and it's something in it stains nails yellow okay so now what I want to do is show you guys how to build to use just a portion of a swirl and I'm just gonna use a portion of it and put it right up here okay and since I want high contrast I'm gonna go with black um, hazy why are only 12 people in here um, the reason is because it's Saturday and it's 11 o'clock well almost 12 o'clock where I am and most people don't get on social media on Saturday if they want to go play. If you have work to do all week long, most people go play. And a lot of my followers know that this is going to be pre this is going to be recorded, not pre-recorded, sorry. This is being recorded right now and that it will be in my IGTV. So I never worry about whether anybody's um on because I find that most people can they will catch a replay of it so and it's that's fine as long as I my mission my objective is if I've helped one person here on this live then my day was worth my time um, so yes oh you're in the UK well welcome from the UK um, we are so sad about what's going on with Brexit and the fact that unfortunately we're not allowed to sell to the UK anymore without collecting VAT tax and one would think okay we just collect tax and then submit it to the UK and then that should be that right one would think But it turns out we have to get a special business license to collect VAT tax. And in order to get that license, we must send all of our products to a third party independent lab. And they must, and we must pay them a lot of money to tell us to report to the UK that what we say are in our products are actually in our products and so when you're a small company we have five team members six five or six well I never count my husband and, and me anyway we have less than ten employees and um and so that's just that doesn't work in our budget it's just not an option so we are really really sad about that okay so now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of something here. And this is inspired by something that I found on, on Instagram. Actually, I will show you the inspiration that I'm working off of. And you can see that being inspired by, whoops, being inspired by something doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to copy it. Because, let me get there. It's, all right, zoom out, Anna. It's that one. That's kind of what I'm emulating. But as you can see, especially because this nail is like twice as long as the one that I'm look, working on, um, there's just not enough room. So, but I like the fact that they've got black, little black dots there. So I'm going to go in and add those. Now, what I'm going to do is find a dotting tool, and then I'm going to take a little bit of polish, and just add some dots. Sorry, I'll 
try and zoom in so you guys can see that. That's it. That's sweet. I really, really like it. So red says it's almost 4 p.m. in Det Detroit. I do watch later, so I'm glad you're not concerned how many viewers you have during the live. Yay, good. All right, so you reaffirm that my decision is the right one. So thank you. Um, no, oh. <laughs> Stevie, you never thought of using a stamping card as a polish dot holder. Yes, and if you like to play with gel, and like I'm starting to play with gel as art because you can cure the gel. So I let my polish dry for 24 hours so that it's rock hard. And then I start playing with gel. And the really cool thing is that, you know, you put your gel here and use it kind of as your palette. And then to clean it off, you just stick it under the lamp and it all just pops off. It's really cool. So, yeah. Um, it also makes it so that you can, like, move it out of your way and you don't actually accidentally put your hands in it and stuff. Okay. Now, this one's an interesting technique, and this one's going to require a lamp. And, uh, so, uh, sorry, I just had to play with it. Because I saw it. Um, what is her name? She's a professional instructor. God, it's like, oh, Jubal, J-U-I, J-U-B-I-L-E-J. -E She's awesome. She's awesome. But anyway, this is done with gel. Um, and let me show you how to do this. So I know you, probably a lot of you don't have gel, but it's, it's fun. So this is why I was saying, do not throw away your old stamp heads. So one of these, which one? One of these has a crack in it. There it is. So I wouldn't want to stamp with this anymore. So they're just fragile. They, um, because they don't have pigments to help make the silicone stronger, they tend to crack really easily. Um, we have one blogger and we have to keep her sending her some because her daughter loves tearing them apart. I'm like, honey, lock those up in a safe or something. Anyway, save these because they're still usable and you can play with them this way. But Jewel did this and I was like, oh, this is so cool. So what she did was, so you just take an, any gel, any gel and you make teeny little dots of it. Come on. But you want them spread far enough apart because we're going to smush them. So she took a second one. She went like this. And it spreads it out really thin. And then she cured it. So... I'll let that sit and percolate. Okay. Now, there's a whole bunch of, you know, just uh, playing with gel. It's different than when you're actually doing gel for your nails. Um, that's a whole different beast. There's a lot of right and wrong way to do gel. Um, soak off gel or even hard gel and so it's very very important that you get educated on the proper way to do it so I don't want to get into that but I feel very confident about playing with gel on regular nail polish that's completely completely dry because then you're just doing the nail art and it's very thin and it will soak off with your normal polish Okay, where am I going? There's one, so this is almost done. Okay, so now let me show you what happens with this. Because it can be, it's transparent, and so when you pull it apart, I also found that it's easier to pick these up with silico a silicone brush, and so they just peel right off. 
and then you can stick them down on gloss. You want a gloss because it's stickier compared to um, compared to like a matte finish. Now, could you do this with polish? Of course you can. Um, it, it won't cure. Um, and what you can do is let them dry on your mat. You could do it on your mat. But you're not going to get them as thin and as thin and, and transparent as like doing them this way in gel. So now, some of you are just going to have to go to Sally Beauty Supply if you're in the United States and pick up some of those clearance gels. That's all this blue was. Come on, let go. So it's a cool little bubble effect. And if you do a few different colors, this one, actually, what I did was I dropped some yellow, a transparent yellow polish into it. That's what I did. And normally you would never, ever, ever mix gel and traditional polish. Um, but I was just experimenting and seeing. Now, this has an inhibition layer still on it. So it's sticky, and we need to get that off. So let's see if I can actually remove it without removing my little dots. So we're rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to dab at it. Actually, I can wipe at it. So I'm removing that sticky inhibition layer that is on the gel. And then now I can use just traditional top coat, or you could even use a gel top coat. But you are going to have to buff the shiny surface off of the gel. So, here we go. I'm just going to use normal polish. Seal that in, let it dry, and then come back and stamp over that. Or actually, I think for this one, I just took this glitter, so that, that chunky glitter, and just applied a thin layer over that. So that's how I did that design. Um, Steffi says, uh, that's awesome. And with regular polish, removing it with acetone, it doesn't damage the card. I don't know. Let me try. No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think. Have I done this? Have I cleaned it up with acetone? Yeah. Yeah, acetone shouldn't hurt any, like, any of your plastics. So, because I use acetate, so a plastic... Um, I use that a lot of times for Sharpies as well. You can like save c different kinds of plastic that you get in like, look at your junk mail that you get. Like you can save some of the plastic that comes on some of this junk mail. I think this was um, a plastic, a clear plastic cover so you could see the product under something from Costco right so it'll come in a box that's got a cutout and that's covered by a thick plastic that's what these are so I just save those and then you can use them for sharpie and then you can go in with rubbing alcohol so again we're gonna if we want to take some of that you put a little rubbing alcohol on your brush And you can go through, wet that up a little bit, and you can add it to a nail this way. So again, when we're dealing with um, Sharpie and rubbing alcohol, we want to use a shiny surface, okay? So now what I can do is go back in here with the paintbrush, so we wipe everything off of the paintbrush, 
we're going to pull some of this color out. So you can get a very mottled, mottled type of look. You can go back in with more rubbing alcohol and that pushes the color out to the edges. Did you see how that happened? Watch. It'll push, see how it pushes the color. So like, notice how a lot of this is not painting. This is not being super artistic per se. This does not take tons of talent. It's a lot of blobbing. Now, if I let this dry, now I could go in. Let me see what's happening with this. So I would actually then, I'm, what I'm seeing here is that I didn't get that gel down all the way. So I probably would be better off using a gel top coat. And then you're gonna have to file off the shine before you soak with acetone. Okay, so now I can go back in here and I could either use the Sharpie directly on it or I can control the Sharpie more and get a really, really light amount. I want a little darker. So you don't have to invest in $25 worth of alcohol inks if you've got Sharpies laying around. Also, if purple tends to be your favorite color, guess what? Black, take a look at that. Black is predominantly like eggplant purple. You would never really quite know that without playing with it. Black also, you noticed, does not push very well. So it's, it's more resistant to that. But see, look at that, just like, just like that. Very cool. Okay. Steffi says, my son got into my nail art supplies also and ripped up two of my Bliss Kiss stampers. Oh no, there were pieces everywhere. I wanted to throw my toddler in the trash. You kept your cool, good job. Um, yeah, I know. Those gosh darn toddlers, they're like Velcro to all of our really awesome, expensive things. Um, Ashley says, what this board is called on which it's written fingers, please create some nail art with this. Oh, okay. So this is our manicure mat and it has a raised edge around the entire border. So um, I created this, wasn't the first on the market, but I wanted to improve on the designs that I saw out. So we actually created this raised edge. I paid $1,000 for that um, mold for this. And so this raised edge, it goes all the way around. And so I've actually spilled a cup of water on here and it's contained it. Now, if a cup of water was to dump, then it wouldn't contain it. But what it showed was if I had something like this, let me use water instead of my rubbing alcohol. If I had that spill and it was acetone, I wouldn't destroy my table. Um, and that's what was really important to me, okay? Um, and then also, these are create and contain circles for holding um, all of those little teeny tiny rhinestones that seem to want to hop around like little fleas. Um, and those little caviar beads, those little round pearl type of beads, those are crazy. Um, and then what's really cool, oh, maybe I should show you guys. Does anybody want to see it? I won't if nobody wants to see it. But you can water marble in those. So you can practice water marbling 
without the headaches. Because water marbling is a very, very challenging nail art technique. Very challenging. Um, so, Cartier, what's your favorite nail polish brand? You ask me such great questions. Do I have a favorite? <laughs> yeah, I do. But that's because when I started this business, and I was um, raised very, very poor, single mother, um, and then um, grew up and, and married my amazing husband. And while he was working, um, we had more money. But we also have four children, and they eat a lot. And so uh, I didn't have the largest nail polish uh, fund per se. And I, um, but then when we started our business and cause Corey had lost his job, then we had no money. We were investing it all in the business. So I was on a two year no buy, which meant not buying any polish. It was torture. And every once in a while I failed, but I failed with very, very inexp inexpensive polishes and so Sally Hansen is a good line. It's a good brand, but um, they have a lot of inexpensive drugstore type. And I have since invested in OPI and uh, several of these other more expensive brands. And people want to say, even Doug Shoon will say that these um, polishes, that the salon type of polishes, of course they use more expensive ingredients, but... Um, I have found really expensive polishes to stain my nails just as badly as a, a dollar type of, two dollar type of polish. So I find that um, I don't get very much staining at all from the Sally Hansen line. Um, I haven't gotten any sta staining from Zoya's Pixie Dust line. But it's a very different type of polish. It's a textured polish. Um, what else do I have? I have a lot of different brands. Color Club, LA Colors, LA Beauty, LA Girl, Maybelline, Nicole, Neutronail, Nailite, Michelle, Orly, Pure Ice, OPI, Wet n Wild, Revlon, Sonia Kashnuk. Toma, Sinful Colors, Tip Top, Sation, Savvy. I'm just looking at the name of all of my drawers. Um, and then I have four drawers that, so a lot of those that, that I was just labeling, um, like I'll have a drawer that's full of three different brands, but I have four entire drawers full of Sally Hansen, as well as some shelves that have all of my Insta drives. So yeah, I guess that would be my favorite. Um, Stevie, you call your toddlers gremlins. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Terrible, terrible little gremlins that get into everything. I remember it well and I'm glad it's over. What's my favorite fragrance for the lotion stick? Crisp. Crisp and autumn. Yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. This is another one that I wanted to show you, which was, so this is a Sally Hansen Insta Dry, just because this is like the brightest pink that I own. I was wanting like a really, really, really bright pink, and I'm like, wow, I really don't own very many of those. Um, but... So the inspiration was having just some glitter and all I did was, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done this, but I just put this confetti type of polish and I put it on there so that the polish part got soaked up and left the little glitters and then you just dab those on, okay? And then there is a matte coat a matte layer on top of that. Okay, so that's how I got that look. Now what I wanna try and have you guys see is the spider webs and how those happen. I've moved everything around, so let me get stuff out of my way. And I wanna do this with white. Now, the spider webs here are on a corner 
and this corner is a little challenging to get it and that's why I really really like Lena's um, the white knight because these are so thin that even stamping polish can dry a little bit too fast because they're so thin so 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 thin let's see if i can do this also this gives me lena's thing gives me time to pull off the extra stuff before it dries Now this is normal. So some people like sometimes if you leave if you leave it on here so that it actually dries. So you hold this on there, let it dry, and that's what I should have done. Because these really, really thin designs, they dry really quickly and they'll pull up like this. But you know what? Spider webs are messy. That gel that's normally used to make these spider webs is really, really messy. Okay, so now what I want to do is go in. So I clean up with acetone and I want to go in with a swirl. Which one? Which one? Which which one? I think I want to do this one. This. And I want to tuck this in right here in this curve. Okay? So again clean off your stamp head every single time and so with a normal stamping polish you cannot take the time to clean off the extra so everything that goes around so one of the things that i'll do too is just pick it up with the edge so that well that didn't work um but I would pick it up with just the edge of it so you're not picking up all of this, okay? So let me start over because sometimes practice is just about starting over. So I'm actually glad that you guys are seeing that even, I mean, I've been doing this for a while and even I still mess up, okay? It's not a big deal. Don't beat yourself up about it. You just clean it up and try again and make sure you have good ventilation because you will be working. <laughs> you'll be, Suddenly you'll be like, wait, where did an hour go? Or wait, where did two hours go? And I should have cleaned up. Oh, look at that. I didn't clean up the stamp head before. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. So on a matte surface, it doesn't stick very well. Interesting. But I like that. Do you guys like that? It turned out really cute. That's awesome. Okay. Let me see if there's any new questions. Nope. Um... I feel like I've covered, have I covered most of the things that I wanted to do? Let me stamp a design over this. Let me show you a crackle. I have so much stuff out here, I'm like, I can't find anything. Where did it all go? Here we go. Do you ever feel like that and you feel like as you're working, so zoom out. Hopefully I'm not making y'all dizzy. But as you're working, you're you like your whole table, you've got all this space, and then as you work, you go, everything moves in closer and closer, and pretty soon you're only working in this teeny tiny little square. <laughs> like, how does this happen? So we've learned, I've actually learned to put stuff. So I don't know if this is a tip for you guys. But when you're putting stuff down like this, don't put it down on your mat. 
put it down off to the side. And then at least you've got the working space of your mat. So like you can see that some bunch of stuff is going on over here, okay? So hopefully that'll help you give you more space because it's kind of crazy. All right, I wanna go in with this, this little bubble here. Let me get this. So, and I actually am gonna do it in white because I'm wanting the, to look like the white cut through from the outside, if that makes sense. This white night stuff, it's, this white's taking me a while. It's really, really thick and you don't need to use a whole lot of it. So I'm spending time here kind of cleaning this brush off because we don't need tons of it. Now that was cleaned off too much. And you wanna roll, just barely, barely kiss that. Somebody, one of our blissettes called it kissing it. And it is, you do want to just barely touch. If you're pushing down, you'll actually find that you don't pick anything up when you're pushing it. So you wanna just barely roll it with almost no pressure at all. That could be another thing. But look at how that now looks like it's cracking. So cool, you guys. So cool. Okay. I think, have I done them all? No, I haven't. So I prepped this one. And all I did was, and what I like about this is that, see, it's not like a nice perfect line. I just took my polish brush over the white with this blue, and I just sort of smudged it along that way. Okay, all right. The design I want to do with this one is I want to do black. So here's my inspiration piece. Let me zoom out. So the inspiration piece is this one. I don't remember who did it. Um, let's see if I left it. Nope, I didn't leave their name in it. But that's okay because I knew it was just an inspiration piece because if you can see, she actually used acrylic powder. That's what makes that work like that. So she used gel and then she sprinkled acrylic powder into it to make that. She also used real spiderweb gel. Okay, so let's, I wanna try and sort of mimic this, but with just stamping. So let's see how it goes. I have no idea if this is actually gonna work. I woke up this morning and I'm like, honey, I don't know if I feel super prepared for this <laughs> because I I like to go, oh, okay, I know all the designs I'm gonna do. And he goes, you're gonna do fine. I love my husband. Okay. So we're gonna go with some black spider webs. I'm orienting it so that it's, I'm going to scrape this way. What I also tried to do is, and this is, oh, this is a technique that I figured out. So black is, I want to try and do this. And Lena wanted these closer than I wanted them. I wanted more space. Because what I wanted you to do was be able to put a dot of polish here and scrape it and no... None of the, the designs next to it was picked up. Uh, Lena and I went round and round and round. And she was designing the plate. And I was like, okay. Um, but I probably should have eliminated one of these designs so you, we had more room. So what I learned was if I take a tiny dot and dot it here through the middle... And then up at the top, um, you have better odds of not picking up something to the side. Now, look at your design before you actually do it. Because it didn't pick up all of it the way I would like. So, before you go and pounce it, and this is another reason why I like Lena's stuff, Lena's 
these two polishes um, is that you can you've got time to work with it whereas I could never do this with just what you're seeing me do I couldn't do it with regular stamping polishes you've got to just pick it up and go okay I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy Um, cardio can we see your nail polish and nail care collection um it's a big old mess <laughs> I could do a tour so direct message me to remind me but I could do a live that is a tour of my whole collection and my whole office if you'd like that um, direct message me I would be happy to do that but right now it's kind of hard because the camera that is filming this right now um, is affixed to a tripod and I would make you guys feel sick pulling it all apart and making it move so okay let's try this again happy with that except for the picking it up on the sides which is what I was hoping to avoid for you guys but that is what it is gosh darn it I didn't let it dry I still got to learn how to do that now can we go back in with some other stuff and fix it absolutely we can or we can bail. <laughs> it's totally yeah. Um, Cartier, yes, you can DM me. So what can I do with this? I'm gonna go in with, so I'm gonna cover up that mess with a flower. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna turn that towards me. Now also what I've learned is that with these that are on the edge, um, it's really helpful because the your your stamping plate won't be completely see how I when I push down on it it will not be 100% flat so what you want to do is while you're working with it push it down okay that'll help you also And also keep everything really really close by that will be helpful also and then I also keep a piece of paper towel right at the edge so that when I scrape I'm scraping off onto the paper towel and I'm leaving the mess there Oh, and see that covered up a bunch of those sins that works and I could go back and take a little leaf and cover up in this area and that would be awesome too well this is not what I thought I was going to do with this design but it works it's very very cute okay let me see if there's any questions and I think that um Steffi I have to tell you that so she's talking about it's genius to actually be so let's see if I can pick up some design. No, that's all dry. But if I was to So I want to get rid of some of these designs Steffi's talking about. I can use the card. I didn't come up with this idea. I watched somebody else do it and I was like, "Oh, that's so easy." So nice. Like you can even if you wanted to get rid of this leaf you could do that too, although now I can see it. Oh, oh, 
look at that it worked and again this goes back to why I like Lena's Black Knight and White Knight. It's not always in stock. So get on her email list and see if you can grab that. So, okay. I think this was really, really fun. Let me see if this will actually transfer. No. So it's dried already. And that's what will happen with stamping polishes, any of them. When they dry, then they won't transfer. It just stays there okay and that's why you've got to move fairly quickly because you've got to get it transferred before it dries okay um i think that's it i think i've covered everything i'm sure i could come up with all kinds of more things more 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 but i think that'll give you guys a good start in terms of go play Go play with all kinds of things. Go scoop up all the Sharpies and your whole family will be like, where did all the Sharpies go? And you'll be like, I'm hoarding them. I'm hoarding them. They are now my nail art supplies. <laughs> so, oh yes, uh, Jules says that great tip. You can use a tacky base to apply it if it's dried too soon. Yes. So what Jewel is saying um, is that what I could do is go and apply any sort of a tacky base coat. Sometimes they're called sticky base coats. Um, and you let that dry a little bit. Um, and then it will be tacky. And it will actually then grab that stamped image that's already dried on your stamp head. Okay. Great tip, Jules. Thank you, thank you, thank you for reminding me about that. Lena, Carrie, Carrie says, can you give us Lena's website? Lena Nail Art design nail art supplies dot com lena nail art supplies dot com um what else did i work on got a few of them going on here i did some fun stuff today You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking with me. I really, 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 if you can't tell, I really love the Sharpie technique. So that's, that is um, the equivalent of um, alcohol inks. It is, that's what it is. Jules also says you could even use a clear coat that is not a top coat. Jules, why clear coat versus top coat? Can you give me a tip on that one? Because I've heard it before, and I want to know why. And I also know that when you are making decals on your mat, um, that you want you do not want to use a quick dry top coat as your base for decals on your mat. You want to use a regular clear polish. It dries different. So, and I think it... Um, its consistency is different, so it peels better. Probably, so Jules says probably because of how quickly top coats can dry. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of this, I can see why a lot of people go to gel. Because you don't have to wait for it to dry. It, you cure it. It stays wet until you cure it underneath a lamp. And so I can see the appeal of it. But then there's also the aspect that it's a lot harder to remove. Um, and so that's why I love just traditional nail polish so much. Um, Jules says, I like to use Sally Hansen Extreme Wear in Invisible as the clear coat. Good tip. I don't know that I own that one. All right, so let me zoom in so you guys can all see what we covered today.